This is the story of a drug that was on the market for 14 years and may have contributed to the deaths of thousands of patients. Trasolol, made by Bayer, is given in the operating room to control bleeding. It was a big money maker. Bayer marketed Trasolol aggressively until it was used in about one-third of all cardiac bypass operations in America. But then, in 2006, a study showed widespread death associated with Trasolol, and as it turns out, there was concern long before that. How much did Bayer know? And why did it take Bayer and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration nearly two years to take the drug off the market after major studies revealed the danger? Two years during which it's estimated Trasolol was contributing to the loss of 1,000 lives a month. Doctors believe one of those patients was Joe Randoni. He had a heart murmur since he was born, but that didn't keep him from leading an active life. This was New Year's Eve, 2005, when Randoni seemed to be the picture of health. Hello there, goodbye. Two weeks later, Randoni checked himself in to a Long Island hospital for heart valve replacement surgery. He was 52, and the surgeon told his wife Josephine and daughter Marissa that the risks were low. They said even possibly in five days he would go home. And then, you know, there was a recovery period, as there would be with any kind of heart surgery. Um, but then he should be in ICU for about 24 hours and then move up to regular floor, recuperate, and come home. So the doctors weren't particularly concerned about this? It was routine as far as they were concerned. The surgeon noted the chance of complications at 5%. Trasolol was put into Joe's IV and kept flowing for four hours. At the end of the surgery, the Randonis were told that something was wrong. They didn't go into specifics, just that there were a lot of complications and that making it through the night was basically our first concern. Immediately after the surgery, Randoni suffered two heart attacks and his kidneys failed. Randoni's surgeon wrote in his notes, a protonin-induced graft thrombosis. A protonin is trasolol, and thrombosis means blood clotting. At the same time, in San Francisco, an eminent medical researcher, Dr. Dennis Mangano, was finishing a Trasolol study that had followed thousands of patients, the largest study ever conducted on Trasolol. How many patients? 5,065, 17 countries. And what did your study show? It showed a, an important association between Trasolol use and kidney failure requiring dialysis, and it showed a trend toward increased death in hospital in these patients. Well, we'll try to give them a Dr. Mangano was one of the researchers who discovered that aspirin reduces the risk of heart attack. His nonprofit institute studies drug safety and studies how generic drugs can lower health care costs. His work is credited with improving the health of millions. Ten days after Joe Randoni's surgery, Mangano's study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and reported in newspapers all across the country, including Long Island. The surgeon told us that there was an article in the newspaper, and he told us that he felt that the drug was the reason for all the complications. He had just seen the article <clears throat> in the newspaper himself. He saw it and decided that he would tell us that that's what he felt was the cause, and that he had filed a report with the FDA, and he wanted us to be aware that it was because of this drug. What the surgeon likely didn't know was that there had been concern about the drug as far back as the early 1980s. It was then, in Bayer's hometown of Cologne, that Dr. Jürgen Fischer, director of the Institute of Experimental Medicine, found severe kidney damage in animals given Trasolol. He told Bayer, but he was surprised by the drug company's reaction. I felt that Bayer wasn't interested to examine these side effects. Soon, the same side effects were being seen in humans in America. The most common problem we saw was renal failure, that is the kidneys did not function properly after surgery. Dr. Nicholas Kochukas at Missouri Baptist Medical Center is one of this country's top heart surgeons. In 1992, he conducted a small study, not funded by Bayer, in which Trasolol was given to 20 patients. Thirteen of these patients had problems with kidney function after the procedure. Thirteen out of twenty? Yes. What did you think? Well, this was the red flag, and it appeared that it was related to the use of Trasolol. The red flag showed up in some studies, but not others. 
Safety concerns are often hard to assess until thousands of patients have received a drug, and critics say that Bayer never paid for any studies that were large enough to determine whether kidney failure was a problem. All of the research did show that Trasolol controlled bleeding, so in 1993, the FDA approved it. Doesn't a drug have to be proven safe before the FDA allows it on the market? No. The trials that are constructed before a drug is marketed and given approval to be marketed generally address effectiveness of the studies. Make sure I understand. If the FDA is not certifying a drug as safe before it goes on the market, what is it doing? It's certifying that the drug is effective and that within the small numbers studied, relatively small, it doesn't appear to be unsafe. The FDA approved Trasolol for patients at high risk of bleeding, and it noted that kidney toxicity was a problem. Bayer pushed the drug hard. In 1998, the FDA expanded its approval to cover all heart bypass patients. By 2005, sales hit $300 million. The next year, $750 million was projected, and Bayer envisioned a billion-dollar drug. Then came the Mangano study in 2006 that suggested thousands of patients had died. The FDA issued an advisory to doctors alerting them to Mangano's study, but the FDA didn't plan to have a meeting about Trasolol for eight months. Bayer wanted to have its own study for that meeting to compare with Mangano's. So the company hired Harvard professor Dr. Alexander Walker to look at the records of nearly 70,000 patients. Walker's results were much the same as Mangano's. Patients on Trasolol, he wrote, had an elevated risk of death and acute renal or kidney failure. Meanwhile on Long Island, winter turned to spring and Joe Randoni grew worse. It was a domino effect once the kidney stopped working, then it affected other organs. He was so swollen that he couldn't even close his eyes. His eyes were sewn shut to protect his corneas, and his gallbladder was removed. Because of poor circulation, his legs were amputated. Over eight months, he had 19 operations. They were amazed how he could rebound from all of these instances. They said anyone else who wasn't in good health who didn't have such a strong will would not have made it that far. His tragedy is all the worse because there were two other drugs that might have been used in Randoni's case without the consequences. Drugs that cost $50 while Trasolol costs over a thousand. They're as effective as Trasolol? They were as effective in our studies as Trasolol in limiting bleeding and limiting the amount of blood transfused. With none of the adverse side effects? None of the adverse side effects. 90% of the risk factors... In 2006, Dr. Mangano presented his study to the FDA's advisory committee. Cardiologist Dr. William Hyatt chairs that committee and ran the meeting. What was Dr. Mangano asking the committee to do? He was asking us to review his observational data, and he clearly stated that he felt this drug carried significant risk. And he was asking the committee to review that risk and then perhaps recommend to the FDA that the drug should be uh, not used anymore. Mangano's study was not embraced wholeheartedly by the committee because it was not the gold standard in medicine, a clinically controlled experiment testing Trasolol against a placebo. His study looked at hospital records to see how patients did in the real world. By the time of the meeting, Bayer was holding the results of the study that it had commissioned from Alexander Walker at Harvard. But Bayer representatives stood before the FDA committee and did not reveal that their study existed.